In this video, we're going to show you the basic launch function of a data logger using Hoboware. From logger to logger, the launch window will look very similar. Some loggers support certain logging algorithms and some do not. However, the basic functionality, how you configure the device, how you launch it, are common throughout uh, all the logger families. So even if you are using a different data logger than the one depicted, this should help you with some basic functionality in the Hoboware launch dialog window. Here we have our free version of Hoboware open on our desktop. You can see we have several menu choices across the top of the screen here, several uh, quick start icons that give us access to certain functions in Hoboware. Right now we're going to concentrate in the lower left hand corner of the screen here. Let me zoom in and you see it says ready and no device selected. It means it's not detecting any device being connected to the USB port. When I connect my logger to it, you'll see that a UX100003 temperature relative humidity logger is detected on the USB bus. Zoom back out again here. To access the configuration and launch window, there's a couple of different ways to do that. If we look at the upper left hand corner of the screen here, zoom in, we have some quick start icons. This is the launch icon, this is the readout icon, this is the status, we'll talk about status in a minute, and stop. Or we can get at it from the device menu, if we click on device and launch or control L on our keyboard that will give us access to the launch screen and we'll be able to configure our logger for our deployment. Click on launch. Here is our launch screen. The launch logger window that appears is very similar from logger to logger in that if you have a an indoor UX USB logger, an outdoor station logger, or a water monitoring data logger. The launch screen will look very similar for all of these different loggers. The differences will be in the sensors that are available. And again, if you if this particular logger has two internal sensors, if you were using a logger that has external sensors, it will list those or give you the ability to change that configuration if you wish. Reading from top to bottom, again here is our model number of our data logger. There's a place to put in a name. By default from the from the factory, the name of the deployment, again you're you're naming this particular launch of the data logger, this deployment, by default it's the serial number. This name will be the file name of your data file when you read the data out. So in this case, it would be the serial number dot hobo would be your file name. File name. We suggest using a name for, your, for each deployment that makes sense to you so that when you accumulate many different data files, over a period of time you can differentiate them from each other just by looking at the name. It's a lot easier than having to decipher what the serial number might mean. So again you can call it anything you wish. The serial number is retained in the data logger and you can see that from the displayed data in the what we call the details pane which we will be reviewing in the readout video. We do count the number of deployments. Uh, this is recorded in the data logger. It, it takes up no extra memory and there's no limit to the number of deployments of a specific data logger. We are reporting the battery level at this time. This logger has a, a bit of a depleted battery in it. Uh, typically it's when it's new it's 100%. And again this is the battery level that's being detected at this time. We talked about status. There's a, there's a status screen. You can get to that from this particular uh, in the launch screen as well. If we click on status, 
basically what this does is it gives you the information about the data logger, the model number, the serial number, the version of firmware that's in the, the logger itself, which is the, the software in the logger. The previous name, again, it was a serial number, which was used for the previous um, deployment. What the battery level was for that deployment, the last time it was deployed. Again, how it was configured as far as how it was configured to stop, how it was configured for a logging interval, which was one minute, when it was launched, the deployment number at that time. And it also tells us the current status of the data logger, which is right now it is not logging, it is stopped. And then some information about internal events. Below that, we can actually see what the sensors are currently reading, the internal sensors of this data logger, as well as the calculated dew point, which Hoboware calculates for us. Keep in mind that when you are in this status screen, the logger is being kept awake and the, and the sensor is being kept active, so it is using more battery than it normally would when it is logging. Again, this is just a quick status check. Back in the launch window here, it's, it's important to understand that these values that are being populated in this screen for the name, the sensor selected, the logging interval, things like that, these are being obtained from the previous launch. So however the logger was launched before, this is how this is being populated and then gives you the ability to change it or just launch this logger again with the same configuration. There are time saving options in Hoboware Pro. Again, this is the free version of Hoboware that allow you to populate this information, the information in this launch screen from the configuration of the previous logger that was connected to the USB port. And that's a time saving feature. Uh, we'll go over that when we talk about preferences in another video. Notice here we have two sensors available. This has two sensors inside. Temperature and relative humidity. When he, relative humidity is enabled, you cannot disable temperature. That's why that checkbox is, is grayed out. That's because temperature is required for determining relative humidity. Moving downwards through the launch screen, we see under our logging mode, this is our calculated duration. Again, this is how long the logger will take to fill its memory based on the interval and the sensors that are enabled. So in this case, with a fixed interval logging, Interval of one minute, it will take 30.3 days. If we change this, you'll see it change. For example, if we change it to five minutes, now it will take 151.3 days to fill its memory. Below that, we can configure the data logger as to how we would like it to start recording data. If we say now, it will start immediately when we click the start button. At interval means it will start at the next logging interval. In this case, we have five minutes selected, so it will go to the next five minute increment. Notice to the right we see a, uh, a clock that is counting seconds and minutes and hours. This is from our computer clock. The logger, or Hoboware, I should say, uses this time and date as its start time and date and records it in the data file as a fixed value when we launch the logger. That's important to note because if your computer clock is wrong in your computer or in your launching device, because we do have devices called data shuttles which will be covered in subsequent um, videos, if the clock in the shuttle or the computer is incorrect then your time and date in your data file will be incorrect. This is only when launching the logger. When you read out, you can read out data loggers with a with a computer with a different clock, and it doesn't matter. It just it matters about the logger, the the computer that's launching it, because that's where that start time and date comes from.
If we select an at interval, notice what happens to my clock. It should change to the next five minute increment because we're saying we want it to start on a five minute increment. If we change this to 10 minutes, this would be a 10 minute increment. Hourly, it'd be an hourly increment. On date and time gives you the ability to program a future time and date when you want the logger to automatically begin logging. This can be set up to six months in advance. This is a good feature to take advantage of if you have multiple data loggers that you are configuring and launching and you want them all to start at the same time. Also, this logger has a push button on it, so you can take advantage of that push button by selecting push button start, and then you can basically click start, click button start on the, on the uh, launch screen here, take your logger to its location, press and hold that button for three seconds, and the logger will begin logging then. There are several options for how you want the logger to stop its logging activities. By default, when you have a brand new logger, the logger will stop when the memory fills. So in this case, with a five minute logging interval, it will stop logging at the end of the logging duration, 151.3 days. If we select never, this will allow the logger to overwrite old data with new data from the beginning of its memory when the memory fills. This We call that wrapping. Some people call it circular logging. Some people call it first in, first out. Really depends on the customer what kind of data they would like to get as to what they, how they configure stop logging. One application for wrapping is we have customers who only care about the last 30 days or so of data. Because this has a 145 day um, fill time or duration, they just leave it on wrapping and then they just look at it every 30 days or so. You can configure the logger to be stopped by pushing the button on the top of the logger. When you select that, you also have the option to allow the user to restart the logger logging with a button push. That is provided there is memory left in the logger to do that. You also have the ability to program in an automatic time where you would like it to stop. A stop, a, I should say, a time where it will automatically stop in the field. So uh, several different choices for that, or you can program in a time and date when you want it to stop. There is one more option. You can turn the LCD display on the front of the logger off. You can choose to do that. This saves a little bit of battery life. It also makes the logger appear that it's not doing anything to the casual user. It also hides the data from uh, in case you don't want anyone to know what the current temperature or relative humidity is in the, in the area being monitored. You can turn that LCD back on just by pressing the button on the top of the logger and that will stay lit for 10 minutes and then it will go blank again. To get the logger to start logging, we will tap on or click on the word start down in the lower right hand corner of the launch logger window. Notice it says start here because we're saying start logging now so if we tap on start it will immediately start logging if we had changed this to at uh, interval it changes to delayed start you see that also on a on a future time and date it would say delayed start for push button it says button start it would still go through that same launch status screen but then you have to either push the button or wait for that time to elapse before it starts logging for this Example, we'll just say now, and again, you can see the time incrementing. That's the time the logger will use as its start time in your data file. So if we click on start, we'll see launching logger, and then the logger displays the word load on the screen, and then it begins logging data.